Good morning, everybody. It's the 19th of June. Welcome to Breakfast with the Masters. I uh, have a few new people again today. Did you make it, Johnny? Doctor was good. We got a plan. Just like trading, we got a plan. So, uh, that, that unfortunately, that doctor has spawned two more doctors, but we've got a plan. That's fine. As long as you got a plan, right? How many original members are here? Eighty-five percent. I mean, we have an incredible retention rate, which is good. Yeah, more probably more than you thought. Um, and two of the people that are here are, aren't here because I kicked them out. How about that? It does build strength to strength. Oh yeah, I I've showed people the door. Uh, one person was rude. Ha, yes, how, I'm not going to say his name. How, well, I will say his name. How is Victor? I have no idea. One thing I do know is Victor's not talking to me. Hey, Johnny, how are you? Welcome aboard, buddy. Johnny says you fired me before. Yeah, but you take a look and you keep on ticking, buddy. Just keep at it. All right, so... We got to get started because we got some we got some work to do today. Um, Johnny, this is got you're not gonna you can after today you can go back uh, after the topic today and welcome. You're getting a lot of welcomes from people, by the way. After after today's session, you'll be able to go back and review the last two or three sessions. And um, I have just been on a holy terror in crude oil. This is the best place to be for trader education, it says Robbie. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's what we try to make it. And um, I think through what we showed on Monday, we're up, uh, I don't know, 35, 39 stops. And um, kind of feel like I'm, I'm, I'm back in my old stopping grounds trading fast and in rolling chops so yeah very happy trader now I'm, I'm going to show you something today and this is for all of you that envision are trying to envision what you can be if, th if you are the type of Again, this is a this is a vision of the future for you. It's not the vision of go out and do this today, okay? But this is I'm going to show you when you get your eyes correct and you master yourself and you practice. If intraday trading is your thing, I'm going to show you what it can turn into, okay? don't try and go do this today you've seen me work this market over now for I don't know how this is it's just in June I think we're only through June 11th it, it could be it could definitely be a glimpse of your future Gina but to do this you need to understand structure in real time You need to have a very good feel of repeatable patterns. And the most impar important part, it's not a parlor trick, the most important part is you have to have mastered yourself. If you go out there trying to be a, you know, a gun shooter, you'll blow your account up, okay? Period. So, just take this as a goal of glimpse of the future, as a goal 
don't try and go out and emulate this tomorrow or next week. Hey Jade, how are you? All right, so I'm going to first show you a chart because I, I want to show you something that you're going to see me use. Had a good dinner, Jay? You're going to see me use this type of signature. But I can only use it if I recognize market structure. Okay. All right. Let's go to work. So I don't. I don't care what this is. It doesn't matter. This is the chart we used for eating with the master. But we're using it for a different educational purpose here. Okay. I just want you to pay attention to the bars. Everyone with me? You will see this on, this is a weekly, you'll see this on monthlies, weeklies, dailies, 377 tick, 89 tick, 20 minute, 204, it doesn't matter. Okay, if you master market structure and have sterling money management, but most importantly, have mastered yourself, you will see this and be able to take advantage of it. Okay? Okay. Now, so you can see price is heading down. We get a wide range bar closes on its low. Smaller, smaller inside bar. Smaller bar. Even smaller bar. The volatility is declining. Again, a smaller bar. And look at the closes and opens. Look where all the activity on the opens and closes are. See it? You have to pay attention to small details. That's why I have so many, excuse me, so few bars on my charts. I I don't care what the high or the low was somewhere over here to the left. I, I really care about this bar versus this bar versus this bar versus this bar. That's more important to me than anything going on even this close or even this shelf. You see that? I'm living right here, man. If you can't get into that state, you cannot do what I'm about to show you. Still, lower volatility bars. It's lowest volatility on the screen. Okay, we come down and leave a low. Do you see it? Closes in the middle. I mean, we don't know it's, it's a significant low. We had a we had a median line facing down here. You can see. It. The BC. I'm gonna. I'll flash it for you. Then I'm gonna get rid of it because I don't want to muddy up the picture. Okay, there's our median line, and here's the warning line. So we've popped through the median line, but we're not making it to the warning line. Okay. But I don't want to lean on the median line. I want you to pay attention to the bars. All right. Price comes down, makes a low. Volatility picks up a little bit. Price closes to the middle. Okay. You can see something completely different. You got all of these bars right here. These are, this is the congestion. We pop below it for one bar, and the next bar comes right through it and cleans out all these bars, closes on its high. It doesn't look like any bar in the series. See it?
you can think of it as slope congestion if you want. The important thing is smaller range, even smaller range, now minute range. And then finally, the market gives it up, but it is unable to run to the downside. Closes in the middle of the bar, and then you get this bar and look at it relative to all of these bars. And look at the close. So all this work, remember this is, it doesn't matter how what it is, but how, think of this one, one, two, three, four, five periods of work taken out in one bar. And a huge different look. Now they're not always this pretty. And sometimes rather than when a one bar touch down here, you'll get a one, two, or three bar what ends up being a wash and a rinse. And I, I'm not going to relate this to what Shane's talking about in market maps. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not saying I, he's talking about the same or he isn't. I don't know. Okay. But price pokes below here and anybody that got caught selling people were taking profits some people might even have started to get long but then the profit stops excuse me the stop loss entries for people that are breakout sellers hit the market and anybody that was just poking at it trying to buy a bottom just got stopped out but there's no follow through and then this bar just wipes out all of this momentum. Your point is very good. If you look at the whole picture, nothing looks different. Lower lows and lower highs. But put the microscope on and you can see the difference you're talking about, the change. Okay. Again. The people that had or have sell orders up here. don't give a rat's ass what's going on here they don't care these are the people playing at the margin it's the you know as Shane would say the Momo players it's those people it's the breakout players it's the Momo players and it's the people screwing those people with this bar this is either somebody grabbing them by the short and curlies or it's everybody is now short and there are no sellers and once one rat starts to take profit they all run away but no matter what price tells you everything and that bar right there just told you everything everything you need to know you need to know about anything now the question is have you seen a repeatable pattern? What do you do with this? And most importantly, can you master yourself? Can you trust yourself? Because otherwise, we still have people here that are selling this breakout, folks. They nod their head when I talk about why you can't do this, and then they sell this breakout. Because they think it's picking up speed. Do you want to buy after this bar closes? No. We don't want to chase it. But this is the first thrust higher. It's our first inclination. Okay? So, when we get congestion at this base and a thrust higher... I now expect a higher low. See it? I've seen this game before. It's a shell game. I've seen it before. We've got a wash and rinse or a spike low here. And now we've got congestion at the base. So I expect a higher low. I already know, if I'm in tune with this market, I already know where I'm willing to spend my stop. I don't need a median line. I don't need anything. 
I'll show you how to use a median line. But can you see where I'm willing to spend my stop? Going up. Well, I'm going to put my order around this congestion. And I'm going to have the stop below the spike, right? Well, instead of saying seven ticks below the poke, it's the, a measure of noise. Remember, this is a week. This bar depends on the period, your, the time period, or the number of ticks right but yeah it's some measure of noise easy peasy if you recognize what's in front of you well, that's the key if you recognize what's in front of you what's in front of you not what's over here not what's over here okay what's right in front of you keep your eye on the prize all right we come up we got three bars higher the number three doesn't matter, but we've got follow through to the upside. See it? So this was an easy one because you've got the wash or spike. Now you've got follow through to the upside. And you actually have time between the entry to think about it. Pull back. See the order? Look at the congestion. Uh, it's not a mountain fill. It would be a mountain fill that came down here. Filled. See it? Look, I expect a higher low. I'm not buying a double bottom. I'm buying in here at all this congestion. This line could be here. It could be up here. It doesn't matter. It's the same trade. You choose, but it's it's no no deeper than that. Okay. High activity bars. Okay. You don't want to miss an entry here. You're going to get one shot at this. Buying in the congestion after you see the congestion wash. That's a, that's a good, I like that. After the congestion gets washed or maybe it's a spike. If we get back to that same price, it's binary. It should hold. And I'd say 80% of the time it holds. If it doesn't, you're going to get stopped out. But if it does, you just picked everybody's pocket. Okay? That work, Aaron? There's a similar pair. Oh, okay. Now, Robbie, I'm not answering questions. You're going to get four more shots at this. Would the vertical fall down prior to the congestion being poured here? No. Pay attention to right in front. what's well, right in front of you. You're going to get four more looks at this, okay? We're talking about this right here and nothing other than this right here, okay? You with me, Ouija? Okay. I expect a higher low. Congestion, the wash or the spike, this is my order right here. Nope, my hands are out right here, Gina. See it? Because I expect a higher low. If I don't get a higher low, I'm wrong. Just take take my stop. I walk away. Okay? If you're unwilling to trade that way, you probably cannot trade this entry. That's okay. Okay? And you're not going to be able to trade any of the entries that I show you today. And that's okay. It's not for everybody. It's it's not for anybody here yet. It's gonna You're going to see the, how fast this thing moves. All right. Watch. All right, so we're in. Once this bar pops, you can see we start to move away. Now we close on our high. C is in. 
So there's actually a median line here somewhere. That's not it. Hopefully I can find it. Yep, there we go. So if you need the help of a median line, if that will help you, here it is. I mean, yeah, you could have seen this low, this pop up, and bought this bar, okay? But the key is just just get long right down here, okay? Now, at that point, uh-oh, it's vertical. It's over, okay? Do you see how you, there's only one area that you can get in. It's right here. Now, sometimes, sometimes you literally have this bar to recognize, this bar to buy. It's, it gets that fast, okay? This one is spread out. There's time, but all the keys are there. But sometimes this whole thing happens in three bars. Are you with me? Okay, that's the, that's the easy to read me widen it out that's the easy to read version right there and you can look at the recording and follow it through and I'll just I'll just do a quick bar by bar and you can do your own commentary okay congestion breakthrough do not close on our low close on the midpoint Surprise higher. So now you see the congestion or base. All of this is washed. Three bars higher. And this is an easy one because you expect a higher low and it takes a number of bars to swing down. So you can take your breath and wait. Put your order in now as it swings lower. Okay, you've got a number of bars to catch your breath and go, okay, I've seen this. Everybody, so you can go ahead and watch this in the replay, and now it's over. Like I said, you, if you don't get it down the congestion area, you don't get it, period. This median line entry, as you can see, the problem with it is, okay, it does break through and test, but you can't get underneath C. You cannot, when you trade these things, you cannot use cheap stops. If the stop doesn't work, don't take the trade, okay? All right. On to the fun. So, as we finished on Monday, if you remember, this is a big, long run up. Oh, I, I, I don't even remember how many points it is. It's like 350 points, right? I think we missed 250 to make $3,500. However, I showed you, I think, four different exit possibilities. Remember that? Okay. No one actually ever asked me where I got out, which I thought was interesting you let me out the door without asking I got profit stopped out right here there's a maximum excursion over line over here it comes back and double taps it we talked about that no I did not I talked about this would be the beautiful exit right here. I didn't take it. I got profit stopped out right here. Okay, and here and and now watch. So here's this is where we stopped that. What I think you, that's the it's going to come back here up in this area, Robbie. But that's not where I got out. I got profit stopped out. All right. Now,
we come down and what I did was grab um, you'll have to wait for it to f the, the heck am I missing here hang on a second that's an excellent question there it is uh, is it here? There it is. Okay. Sorry. All right. So, What's the problem going from one day to another? Why did you did you not take? Okay, Johnny, you're just going to have to watch. Okay, we're in a rhythm. You don't understand what's happened to this point. Okay. So I'm not going to take too many questions because I have an agenda today, which is if you can. Recognize repeatable patterns. Master yourself. Train your eye. And stay to the right here. This is what intraday trading at its best looks like. Okay? That's all, that's all it's for. Okay? Don't go out and try it. Okay. You see the line of maximum excursion down here? Forced low at the prior low. This is probably a B. Right? You with me? Up here. And and we did talk someone asked did you did you what do I see horizontal did you think about going short? Anybody remember that? And I said, well, no, I'm trying to get out of my long. I'm concentrating on my long. This is one of the problems about being in a position is sometimes, you know, the magician passes the ball from one hand to the other right in front of you. If, you ha if you're longer already or short, and this is a comment it's hard to see the other type. I added this in this morning because this, this is what I thought at the time. As this came off, I thought, oh, I think I just missed the momentum. We talk about the mass. This is a lever. And we talk about the mass shifting. And when we came up here, couldn't close above, and came up here and couldn't close above, and started to take out the low, I thought, oh, did I just miss the top on this retest? I should be selling here, but I'm still fumbling with my long. Now, it's lots of money, right? So, this is the first key when you're intraday trading and trying to trade. Some of you have dreams of trading three, four, or five times a day. When crude rocks and rolls, if you're good, and you're in the stream, we talked about being in the stream, and you can feel the rapids, and then you can feel the market get nice and smooth and calm, and then you can feel it coming out the other end. If you can get in the stream and feel that flow, and you've mastered yourself, you'll get three or four or five trades. But one of the keys to this trade, one of the things to talk about today is 
you need to be if you want to trade like that you need to think about this simple mantra get in get out nobody gets hurt get in get out nobody gets hurt great my my buddy Michael is laughing the guy that runs the gray beards Michael that's his that's his gift to me in 1980 when he first became my broker when we were first becoming active we were actively we were the only institution in the world that was allowed to trade on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange because at that point um, currencies they at that point uh, they were they had not established credit that's how it's hard to believe the Mercantile Exchange was not viewed as a credit worthy institution they've never gone bankrupt they've never defaulted on one contract but yet banks were banks and things like places like Goldman Sachs didn't see them as a worthy place to give credit so you couldn't you couldn't trade them we we were able to trade to them and we had a huge edge but the mantra was always the same learn this if you're going to intraday trade get in get out nobody hurt gets hurt and the reason why that's important The reason why this is important is because if you're looking to make multiple trades in a day in an active market, if you're long, worrying about your long when this happens, you're going to miss your leg down, aren't you? And you might get hurt. So, you want a reasonable, logical profit target. This is no longer about, if you're intraday trading, are you ever long and short at the same time? I have no idea what that means, Gina. If I'm long and short, I'm flat. What do you mean? I know you have a good question. What is it? I mean, I, do I hedge myself? Long and trailing but short at the top. Well, if I was already long and I'm trailing a stop and then I get short at the top, I've just flattened out. Would you still insist on a minimum risk word of 3 to 1 for the short? Yes, I absolutely do, Robbie. I don't sniff at anything unless it's at least 3 to 1. You need, would you hedge yourself if you were playing with the fold? Never. I, I never hedge anything. I ever, never, ever, ever hedge anything. Okay? Anybody that comes to market geometry, hedging is for losers. Okay? If you don't want to be long, get the fuck out. If you don't want to be short, get out. Okay? Don't waste your time. This is about directional trading. and nothing else you're either in it or you're out okay screw all that hedging stuff and all the you know, I'm gonna put an options strangle around it screw that stuff there pe you know what somebody's in it knows how to do it fine I don't care this is easy directional trading well easy once you master yourself and master what's going on it gets fairly easy but if you're struggling with your long position and this happens you will never see the other entry are you with me so the point here if you if you recognize this as something that you can trade intraday is okay solve the pattern that's going to happen in front of you over here Let's think about what's in front of us. I, I, okay. Solve the pattern that's in front of us over here. We're trading to the right. Bring your best game. You're trading here. You're thinking to the right. Okay. So as it comes down here, I want you, I need you to pay attention now. 
Are you with me? This is our prior low. See it? I just changed something. This is our prior low. Price comes down and tags this prior low and turns on a dime. Force pivot at the prior low. It's probably a B pivot. Why? Because at this point, I realize this is probably a major top. We come up above the prior high, can't hold above it. Can't hold above it. This was probably a, pro a major high. So that, that makes this a B. Now we're swinging up to what? Okay, if we're shoulding, shoulder weak reaction, sure. If we're swinging up to a pause C, Okay, and I know we talked about this for the last three or four sessions as we've worked this market over. I know these are wide range bars and most people run away from these like, you know, like they're some guy with a 45, Colt 45 pointed at them. These are the bars, yeah, that you want to take advantage of. I don't care what, you know, I know it looks like a train going at 100 miles an hour. It needs to swing back for me to trade. Now, if I'm solving this, when we get this bar here, I can now say that this entire structure is at least horizontal, right? You see it? It looks like tops are in. Certainly a base has been built. Everybody see that? Hey, Lewis, how are you? We spring another wide range bar. Doesn't scare me. I need a pullback. Because I'm looking for C, right? Another wide range bar closes on its high. I notice the volatility's picked up, but I do expect an equal or lower high. If I copy this line of maximum excursion, which came at a forced pivot, makes it tested up to here. I expect somewhere in here to see a lower high. Are you with me? It's intraday trading. I'm trying to catch these swings. These are not swings that you'd catch on 60 minute charts. These, this, these are two bar. Let's just take a quick look at how fast these are going. 10.30.04, 10.30.23, 19 seconds between bars, okay? This thing is steamrolling. So if you can't make these decisions fast, you, Shane told me he's trading at 14.44 and he thinks the market's fast. This, I, I went from 3.77 up to 7.77. I'm only able to do this because this is about the sixth trade in a row and I've gotten better and better at the at being in the stream, right? <coughs> you can be 888, 777 there. It doesn't matter. I, pick, I picked the number out of the air. Yes, I'm looking ahead with the pre-drawn line of maximum excursion. That's exactly right. Okay, that's going to be the key in every one of these trades. I'm planning out what the likely, the swing right ahead of me is likely to look at. I'm looking right over here, right to the right. See it? I'm not looking over here. I'm looking right in front of me. Follow me? I want to get in. Okay, I just got profit stopped out, by the way. Okay, see it? 
This allows me to refocus. I'm no longer tied to a position. I took money out of the market. Now I can take a breath. This was a long, torturous move, if you remember. We went horizontal twice. Yeah, I only get a couple of minutes, but as I look at it and say, okay, this was an entry that I missed. Okay, I, I don't have the short position, but what's it likely to do? It comes down here and stops at the prior low, which is a force pivot. If this is the high, and here's my line of max exclusion off the force pivot, if I'm looking for a lower high, it's likely to come in right in this area. See it? So, let me open it up. And you see the close middle middle on the high. Now we get new highs, but it's right at my line of maximum excursion and closes on its low. It looks like a C. The key to these trades, first of all, master yourself. Second of all, looking, understanding market structure and looking to the right and projecting the market structure to the right so that you're anticipating where the market is likely to turn. And then, of course, since you've mastered yourself, is just absolutely surgical money management. Okay, what I'm looking to do in this market is to get in. We said it before. Get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. That means it looks like you could oh, okay. I, I'm not gonna debate, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna draw what other people want me to draw, I'm sorry. Watch what I'm doing, try and learn from what I'm doing, okay? It's very unusual to find three or four of these in a row. So you can watch this over and over and see if you can catch the clues that I'm seeing. And it's very seldom that I'll show this. One, because I don't want to put gasoline on the fire and see you guys go out and trade like this right now. So you're not ready. But The markets don't often give me the, the opportunity to show you these types of trades one right after the other. We become, as a class, we become very intimate with crude, right? So since it's giving me this opportunity to show you a series of trades and how they're strung together and how they continue to build and the pace, can you feel the pace picking up in these trades? We've gone to casual. We had a couple extended trades. We had both sides. But now that, you know, the beat is getting faster and faster and faster. So, at just major fo top forums, if we get a lower high here, we, will, we, we should probably break out of this horizontal area. That's the thinking over here part. Are you with me? If this is a C, let's see if I can grab it. Probably not. Well, that's lucky. The median line will look like this. The difference in this, the only difference in this median line, it doesn't matter where you anchor it is. I think I put the A here, but you could put the A here, and then this would be the AC line. You see it? And it's a different, it's not even one pip difference. It's 
Nothing. Okay. This looks like a C. I want this median line in as quickly as possible. Why? Yeah. I'm, I want to trade. Not only do I want to trade, I might literally want to get in here and get out here. Right? Now, Gina says sell the pullback. Remember the last example, and we can think of this right here. Believe it or not, this and this as the congestion. This as the spike up that gets rejected. We might be selling the congestion right here, Gina. Sell the pullback. It might be right there. Yeah, I just use my uh, line of maximum excursion in real time. I'm using the median line here, not, well, it'll help you see the entry probably, I guess, maybe, but you're going to have to wait just for the stop. Just hang on. Just slow down. And then more importantly, we're going to need a profit target. Okay. I'm sorry, what's your question, Gina? About on that low close bar that's already there. What about this low close bar? Oh, we, ha we haven't sold yet. No, no. But you were, but you were saying pull back. I thought you meant pull back here, okay? We, we, we don't have a pull back yet. Okay, but it's not probably not... If this market is moving this fast, three seconds between bars or whatever the hell it was, it's not going to be over here. Are you with me? I expect this thing to rock and roll. So I need to have three things in mind immediately. What am I willing to risk? What's the structure likely to look at? look like and if that's the case where am I willing to sell and where am I willing to get out I need that picture in my mind immediate immediately now okay I, this doesn't come out you can't punt you can't get the entry in and then say okay now what do I want to do with this because you're likely to get you shoot yourself in the foot okay all right so Are you, yeah, that's a great question, Carlos. Are you mentally prepared to take this trade? And you better ask yourself, okay, do I know what I'm doing? Am I ready to take this? Because this thing is rocking. Let's look. 10, 30, 38, 10, 30, 51. 13 seconds. So please don't put your toe in this water in this fashion, but you can trade weeklies like this or 20 minutes like this, okay? The key is once you, you need to start to see like this, then you can actually trade like this on any time frame, okay? And you can never, ever chase, okay? Okay, I know it's down here. And you say, all right, well, the high's in. At this point, you can't be despairing and thinking, oh, I missed the trade. Where are your eyes? Think carefully. Where are your eyes? Well, are they here? Yes, they are right here. If this is a lower high and it's I'm going to make a trade, there's only one place I can possibly trade. Please, yes, Amanda's got to please come back and fill me, sir. Right?
Now, you can think about all kinds of places to get out, and we'll, I'll show you some. Let, let's just get to the trade first. These are, it's going to give us a few bars, but remember, we're talking, now we're talking about, so 13 seconds on the last bar, this one is 51, this one is, okay, well, this is a whole 17 seconds, okay, this thing is moving. Would you consider that close enough to the median line center to fulfill its purpose? No. And Robbie, remember, I'm not, I'm not going to take it off. I'm not even trading on a median line yet. I'm going to put the median line in actually only for the purpose of looking at targets. I'm, I'm using it for you guys to underscore where the likely entry is. I'm not paying attention at all about the median line or the lower parallel. The only thing I care about, Robbie, is something up here. Are you with me? Robbie? Okay, I'm going to say it one more time to you, Robbie. This is not Hagopian. One, one second, boys. Girls. Hello? Hello? Hello, this is Cigna Home Delivery Pharmacy with a pre-recorded message. No, it's not. Okay. This is not Hagopian, Ravi, and this is C, so you can't be worried about this because the median line wasn't drawn. So there's no Hagopian here now, okay? Ravi, you need to take Hagopian out of your memory. You no longer get to think about Hagopian. As far as you're concerned, listen to me carefully. I've got you, I've got you hypnotized. Dr. Hagopian never existed, okay? I've I've taken it I've I've just done brain surgery. There is no Hagopian. Forget it. You're seeing Hagopian in your sleep. Yes, you've been you've been de Hagopianed. Okay, now back to work. The only thing I care about is this area here. Uh, it's a line of maximum excursion. It's been tested down here. It was a forced pivot. Okay, I put in the median line for you. I might add it later once I, the, the trade unfolds. I get to the entry to say, okay, I got this beast. What's the likely exit? Okay, if I can extend it. Okay, I needed to do what, Gina, if I want to get it in? I'm looking for that pullback and it needs to stop. That's right. What and, and what 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 might I use for a stop, Gina? No, specifically. Well, it's definitely not A. A's all the way hell up here. I'm going to be some measure of noise above C. That's all. That's all. That's all I can afford. Take a look. But if that's the case, think about it. If that's the case, that means I expect we're going to take out the horizontal low. No, you don't. You're just not allowed to chase, Gina. You don't have to resist. You're just not allowed to ever chase. Do you first wait to get your lower high and then noise above C? Well, watch the entry, Matt. So we need it to pull back. And we would have to be comfortable with this B 
being an area that attracts sellers so we could put our stop up here if you're not comfortable with that you cannot take the trade okay no pullback for us at least no pullback for us okay I think a, a wide stop at 25 or 36 would make sense this is a 25 tick Nikolai if I if you would place a few ticks above the double top is that logic flawed uh, what double top you mean these double tops Nikolai well yeah if you can reach them that'd be great I don't know if you I don't know if the stop will be that wide. I'm using 25 ticks, okay? If you want to spread out to 30, I wouldn't get too wide because remember, this is going to be an intraday trade, Nikolai, so I don't expect that we're going to get 300 points on this trade. I'm going to expect to make three trades in this day. Okay, so tw I'm 25 ticks is as much as I'm willing to spend. So if it covers it, fine. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If we don't get in soon, we're not going to be able to trade, right? Because this thing is flying and it's also decaying fast. All right, so we need a pullback. Let's 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 get on with it. Get Nancy, Gina. All right, as we swing up, Nikolai, does that answer your question? See, here's the thing. If you pay attention today, all all questions will actually be answered. And the reason why is because you guys are good students, so you're anticipating the same thing. You're anticipating what I normally do anyway. So just this is just fast motion. But it's you'll see, even though it's fast motion, I'm not going to deviate from what I do every day or if I'm trading weeklies, okay? It's the same principles. I don't deviate. I'm just going to show you what happens when things speed up. I want you to understand that when things speed up, if you slow down and think, you can use the same principles and trade intraday and get three trades that give you three and a half, four, five to one. Book them, be done. That's your goal. If you're an intraday trader, that's your goal. If you can find a market that's moving like this, it's not every day or every week that you're going to find a market that's this that's been this active and this clear. This market has just been golden for us. All right. And I'll show you something at the end. Somebody remind me to talk about elliptical decay. So when price decays fast, uh, we shouldn't expect to hide behind, but rather to look for much aggressive entry. Well, we are, we are hiding behind this high and this high can you see it but as I told you I'm looking to the right as we're over here I know what I'm looking for I'm looking to the right I've already drawn it out for you now let me put the horizontal line in for you as well It's somewhere, it, it's somewhere in here is our high frequency area, okay? And price is going to swing up to that. And I can see that when we're here. Now, if it literally, if it came right here right now, I would trade. David, are you with me? Now, since these are 12 second bars, I doubt that you guys would pull this out on a regular basis without shooting yourself. And in fact, in most days, I don't trade these markets as fast. It's just that I, I got into such a rhythm and, and I was actually joining us feeling like a young colt again um, that I just went ahead and put everything aside and just did nothing but this. And it was a lot, it's been a lot of fun. But if it came right here at right now I'd take the trade 
18 seconds later. And the median line is not even drawn in. I'm just looking at lines of maximum extrusion. I'm looking for this pullback right here. See it? I'm not looking for a test and retest or, you know, major failure. I've got exactly what I'm looking for. And that, that means I'm looking for a move below this base. That's why I said a lower high breaking out of the horizontal. That means I'm expecting a move below this base so I can eyeball the risk reward. I know the risk reward is three to one or better. Are you with me? Anybody lost? All right. We need it to swing up. It's not swinging up. Wait. Oh, wait. Here it comes. See it? If you just want to put it on the max of excursion line like I did, now I can afford to be above the double tops. So if it swings back fast enough, you get not only this protection, but you get the double tops. I really like that. Anybody not like that entry? But this whole thing is five minutes. Okay, so it's you got to you got to be thinking fast. Well, again, it closes on its high. Are you the noise level above the double tops, or is or being up there bonus? I don't understand the question. Well, I would I would live with being with my stop being above C. Being above the double tops is a bonus. Yeah, Aaron, I agree. If you could not hide between the double tops, you still take the straight. Yes, I would. Okay, because I can already see in my. You may not see this. I already see a quick swing down and breaking these lows. I'm in the stream. I can feel the the current, okay? All right. We close on our high. This is going to spook a lot of you guys off. Right? You need to let this market swing. It's going to look ominous at times but that's all the people that sold down here getting out yeah looks like a force pivot potential very good catch man cube this is likely to be look we've got the line of maximum excursion going for us we've got an upper parallel going for us we've got a prior high gutting going for us everything here says everything's from physics says this is a likely high. Okay? Don't be afraid. And remember, what's our mantra? It's only one stop. It's only one stop. We've already rolled forward 35 or 39 stops. I, hell, we can't have a losing month at this point. We can't do anything but have a fantastic month at this point. All right, so here we go. We're in. You could even have gotten in at the next bar, which closes on slow. Couldn't have got in at that bar, or that bar, or that bar, or that bar, or that bar. Can you see? This is literally what I'm imagining as prices swinging back up. This is the action I expect. I expect we got a date with breaking this. It's in my mind. I can see it. Because I expect this is going to be a trade that is going to be, you know, it's not going to be measured in hours because of how fast these bars are going. That The bar that closed on the high spooked you. Okay, well, then you missed the trade.
that's okay when you see the next trade setup see if that one spooks you out okay we're gonna do three so alright so alright here's what I saw in my mind's eye my little mind's eye that we would bust out of the downside do you see that yeah and that's a that Johnny just made a comment and I would say it again if you expect a lower high this doesn't bother me now if you were closing here I'd be bothered but I'd also be in so I I'm not again it's one stop it doesn't bother me this is the move that I expected come right down to take out this low now we're breaking out of horizontal we were in horizontal now we're breaking out of horizontal do you see that I expect if we're breaking out of horizontal this is how round and smooth I am I expect that we're gonna move from horizontal to a down sloping rolling chop do you hear me we're gonna transition from horizontal to a down sloping rolling chop okay now as this trade is unfolding If I, if you can make that leap, leap with me, that we're going to go from horizontal to a downsloping rolling chop, then you also need to think, okay, then what are the implications of a rolling chop in terms of swing size? Let me, how can I do this? One second. This will work. Okay, you watching? This is a circular or round orbit. circular orbits are easy to maintain it takes very little energy in a system for a circular orbit to be maintained okay because the energy being exerted to pull it back to the center here is the same as the energy here is the same as the energy here is the same all of the, the gravity pull is the same do you understand okay now it's let okay okay so if you can imagine John walked right into it if you can imagine a spiral a rolling chop Can you see in a rolling chop the likely it is centripetal the rolling chop if you think it's going to be a rolling chop that means it has to exist for a period of time so its most likely form is same size swings does that make sense okay now can anybody tell me what this is? I'm not drawing very good, but what's that? It's not a potato. It's an ellipse, right? It's a spherical. It's ob well, oblong. I don't want to use that word, but it's a, it's an ellipse. Okay, here's the problem with an ellipse. Now, in as price gets out here or as a body in motion gets out here to the extreme okay when it's here 
gravity's got hold of it. It's no problem, right? But as we move out the ellipse, the pull of gravity gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And it's less and less likely that we're going to, here's our tangent, that we're going to actually be pulled down by gravity. Okay? It's a much less stable formation. That's correct. So in spirals that go from, I'll just draw over this, that go from this to this and now get to this, that's how you get range extension. The energy, gravity can't sustain and can't pull it back, so you get range extension. Do you see that? So if we're getting these, y, if we're getting expanding pivots, it's not going to be a rolling chop. Can you understand now why? Yes, this is a whole new world. We're going to do this, Gina, in September. We're going to do this with three-dimensional objects. And we're also going to do it with, ready? With flowing energy. I'm going to actually represent flowing energy live. You're going to see flowing energy in a three- and four-dimensional object. And so you're going to see this unfold live right in front of you. You'll be able to come back up. I'll have some several people to come up and help me. And if you want, I'll pass them around the table and you can redo the experiment. It's really simple. And once you see it, you'll go, oh, crap. That's what the market does. I've decided to play Dr. Feynman for you guys for 20 minutes here or there. God help me. I'm not bringing in watermelons. But we'll do something cool, okay? But anyway, does everybody get this exercise? So we can go, then we'll go, we'll go right back to trading now. All right, so if I'm expect, oh, I guess I got to roll, I'm too bad I have to erase that stuff. All right, so if I'm expecting a rolling chop, I don't want a pen. Okay, if I'm expecting a rolling chop, what do I expect when, it, when we talk about swing sizes? I, I expect same size swings, right? Similar size swings. Now, it may take a series or so to set up the rolling chop, meaning th in this one, we're going to get some extra momentum because we're going to break through these prior lows, right? And that may cause a series of sellers. Right? But as this thing settles down and gravity takes effect, I'm going to expect same size swings. Similar size swings. I'm not going to expect range expansion. Not of any not of any consequence. So that means my that means my targets are going to be tight. You follow me? I'm not going to be looking for a flyer. I'm going to be looking to get in, get out, take my money, walk away. Then get in, get out, take my money, walk away. Because these swings are precise. And when they turn around, I don't want to get caught with my pants down because I'm probably not going to have an opportunity. If I don't get out on the extension on one side or the other, I'm not going to have an opportunity to get out with profit or without with much profit, right? And if I'm still fighting trying to get out with profit, I'll miss the next entry. Does that make sense? So you have to keep that mantra in your head. Get in, get out. Nobody gets hurt. I, yeah, I need the reset for the next trade. You're exactly right, Gina. So I need to be out and ready for the next trade. If I'm if I want to do multiple trades in a day. There's nothing wrong with just catching one. But if you're in the flow and you think you can trade the chop and you think you see it coming, then you need to get in, get out, have the chance for reset, see the trade, 
do the trade. Okay, so we're in. We expect a break of this major low. It's taken out the force pivot, the major low. Would there be any clues that, that it will trade as a rolling chop next, or is it a working hypothesis? Um, I'd like to tell you that there's a, at Ouija, I'd like to tell you that there's a handbook where you can look it up and say if this happens, then this happens, and it turns into a rolling chop. There, it isn't. There isn't. So at the end, is it just art? No, it's it's not just art. It's repetition. It's seeing these types of markets over and over again and recognizing the transition from. Remember, this last trade was. 350 pips long okay the transition from that to a flat top to a sustainable spiral lower so it's not art it's it's recognition you have to see the repeatable pattern okay uh, at the end of the rolling chop you should expect elliptical expansion basically pivot expansion well Al the moment you start to get elliptical expansion, what do you know? Simple, simple answer. Come on. No, the moment you get pivot expansion, what do you know? If you, yeah, you're out. It's not a rolling chop anymore. Right. Reset. Right? Range extension does not work in rolling chops. So the moment the range extension happens, you go, okay, well, this is a whole new game. So Ouija, that kind of plays back to your question, right? Something you Something's happening, something else happens. You put the two together and you go, okay, well, that's not a rolling chop anymore. Or, hey, we're walking into the rolling chop. So, okay, so... You often see a rolling chop after a long extended move. Because, you know, we talked about this several days several times ago. What's what's the e what's the uh, definition of insanity? Expecting different outcomes from the same event, right? That's why a rolling chop works, okay? So they're expecting, they're in this long move up, and they've been trained to work that long move up. When it stops, this, the rolling chop is them getting chopped up because they keep expecting that it's going to work, and it's not. They keep buying, and it doesn't over and over, okay? It buys... They buy, then they get stopped out. Then they get short, then they get stopped out. Okay? All right, so we're in. It's done what we thought it was going to do. Take out the prior low and the force pivot. I'm trading off these maximum excursion lines. You can draw on the median line now if you want. And you could have drawn it in if it made you feel better. Most of you would feel more comfortable with having a median line up there. But this is just the AC line or the maximum excursion line, okay? We're down at the lower parallel. First thing to check. I can do it with my eyes, but if you can't, don't worry about it. Okay, at the lower parallel, you've got 3 to 1. Plus. If you want, you can just take your money. Right? Gina says, I'm out. Fine. Take your money. No problem. Right? You got three and a half to one. Get in, get out. Nobody gets hurt. No problem with that. Now, now hang on. Robbie says, yep, me too. I'm out. Okay, now, now listen. If you, it's not clear yet that this is a rolling chop. Right? Taking money is always good as long as it's at least three to one, Johnny. Okay? 
Okay, it's not clear that this is a rolling chop yet. So you might be saying, is this a rolling chop? In fact, Ouija, this hasn't turned into a rolling chop yet. It's making the transition. It turns into a rolling chop when what happens? Can anybody tell me? Think about what I drew. Well, if it reverses right here and then heads to the higher to the upper parallel, then we're in a rolling chop, absolutely. When it becomes crystalline, okay, when similar size reactions are the impulses, okay? When we start getting the same size swings, all those answers are correct. Right now, we don't know if that's the question, or the I should say that we don't know if that's the answer. We're at the lower parallel. We don't know if it's going to stop here, right? And if it does, we don't know that it's going to swing to the upper parallel. So w right now, we don't know that this is a rolling chop. We only know that it's a down move. The easy money, you want your three and a half stops, take it. It's right here. You don't have to because you don't know yet that it's a rolling. It may double the range, may do all kinds of things. The only problem you have is there's no place for a stop, right? So you can do two, one of two things here. You can go to break even. Or you can take your three and a half stops. Okay? I would suggest most of you take the three and a half stops. I went to break even, but at this point, we don't know if this is going to be a rolling chop, okay? All we know is that, and, and in fact, it's not a rolling chop because what are we getting? We're getting what to the downside? And, and can anybody tell me what we're getting? Take a look at this swing. Now take a look at this swing. We're getting range extension. So is it a rolling chop at the moment? No. So we went this whole leg and then finally got this head stander. See this? Okay. I'm not out, but the very first thing I do is, okay, I want to orient myself to the size of these swings. So I measure the, the size of this first impulse swing lower. Okay. With me? Here's the pullback. It's okay with me. I'm at break even. I'd, I'd, be, I'd really love to have a stop right here, but I don't. We leave a higher low. Pullback. And you can see my profit stop. I'm not going to take home much. Uh, 6160. I'm gonna take home 20. I'm gonna take home one stop. If I get stopped out there, but at least I finally have a profit stop. Back to the lower parallel. Back to the prior lows. We break through there. I'm going to hide above these double tops. I'm still trying to decide if this is range extension. If it's range extension, it's not a rolling chop, right? And by the way, it seems like it's taken forever. This is only one hour. Now we're back to range extension and more range extension and more range extension
and you can see I've got the warning line in here and this is my maximum excursion reflected and this is prior lows right here we're in an area we're out at let me show it to you if this is the range from here to here see it from here to here and I double it he comes to here I've got a warning line I've got double the range and right below it I've got my maximum excursion line reflected so I'm right in an area where price should turn I don't want to be a pig okay so we've had range extension but remember the last run up was 350 points this run down it's not the range it's wider than the range but it's only a hundred and 20 points lower 125 points so it's the the range got expanded but the size of the move is contracting do you follow me mm, how can I do this so big ellipse range extension now as we turn if we turn down here we have taken out the what w would have been the coil but as we turn down here we're getting pulled in by gravity and the pull of gravity is very strong because we're much closer than we were when we were in this long ellipse, right? So even though we have range extension, we're now turning much closer to where the source of gravity is, the current action, which is right here, right at the moment, it's right here. See it? It's like it's likely to tighten this whole thing up, and instead of going off into space over here somewhere. We're likely to do something like th only that. And then, again, gravity has set in. And now, you start, you're going to start to expect either, well, in a certain sense, it's range contraction. And in this sense, I expect it to turn into a rolling chop. Okay? People have trained themselves for big fat moves and that's generally when rolling chops come into a play can you see how I mean if you don't understand the gravity implications that's fine we'll work them that's not the point of today's exercise we're gonna work through that stuff all summer but we've had we broken through here's our big impulse we've doubled this tight range and how many times have we seen Archimedes is right doubling the range is just it's just a no-brainer right now if you just taken your money at the median line it's three to one great be happy you're set waiting for the next trade it's okay you know you had an hour timeout it's no it's no big deal All right, so let's see what happens. Did I lose you guys? You guys all right? Staring out in the space. So is, it, are, is it too wild? Okay.
Okay, I, I don't want your heads to blow up. Sometimes at uh, in the Stanford classes, I have to tell the kids, just tell me if you're getting to the point where your head's going to blow up. John says, in a way, we will not get range extension indirectly via a rolling chop. Will we not get range extension? No, it will get range contraction if it turns into a rolling chop. Seems like what you normally do just faster. Yeah, that's true, Aaron. And back to back to back to back trades, which is always nice, right? It's nice because you can see a series of trades and see, I would get this one, I wouldn't understand this one. All right, so watch. You see the exit? Let's pay. We're back to hand-to-hand -hand combat now, bar by bar. I don't care about this. I don't care about this. I care about what's happening right here at the moment, okay? These bars are rocking. Can you see what's right in front of you? Do you remember the weekly chart of Ford that we started with? I mean, is it, does this, it's exactly the same, isn't it? Yes, we've got small tick bars. High activity, small range bars. Poke through, only survive there for one bar. Thrust up. Now, this is the ultra aggressive entry, okay? If you understood exactly what I showed in the first chart, and you're a very aggressive trader, this is actually an entry right here coming up. Okay, we see this bar. We put in our entry okay that's an ultra aggressive entry now you've got some time for this you've got uh, okay so you saw this one happen at um, 1158 you had uh, you had 10 minutes to figure this out and have an entry at or below this blue area of high activity. You see it? That's if you like it. You may not like this. Is that main logic that you are the you're at the warning line and double the range? No, my Aaron, my main logic is the same as when we were looking at Ford. Congestion, run through, this is a wash or a spike, then look at the next bar. Um, why would I look here? Yeah, I probably might, it might be one clue why I look here because I'm at this whole area of confluence. Okay, I'll take that. For whatever the reason, what I want you to take away today is not the big where, but I want you to look at what I'm doing bar by bar right in this area, okay? Now, if you don't like the ultra-aggressive entry... I, I got other stuff for you. Now watch. <clears throat> if you've now recognized this high, once this bar, it, it's easier to see now, isn't it? 
How about now? Is it easier to see now? Aaron, you more comfortable with it now? Aaron? Okay, well, if you don't understand or see why here and why then, let me ask you a question. Now, okay, listen to what I'm telling you instead of keeping asking questions. If you don't understand why here, why now, as this bar prints, do you now see that this was probably a major low? Okay, then I got good news for you. Scotty says, I'm ready to go for a long on a pullback. And Amanda says, yes, come back and fill me. Okay, Aaron, I got good news for you. 80% of the time, you're going to see this price again. Okay? You don't have to have your guns loaded at this bar. Or this bar or this bar why is that because 80 percent of the time it comes back to revisit okay whether it's right at the compression or on a slope line that you can generate very easily okay so there, there's a always not always 80 percent of the time there's a secondary entry that is acceptable and will give you enough of the risk reward that you don't have to bite here if you don't want to okay i'm just giving you the statistics if it, if that's not the case ready for the great answer sharon if that's not the case if it doesn't come back to give you either this same entry or an entry on a slope line. Else is only if you recognize what's happening in real time. Well, no, you've got quite a bit of time here. If it doesn't come back here, it will come back on a sloped line off of these bottoms 80% of the time. If it doesn't, that means we're in an ellipse. So if it comes back, Ouija, what am I now learning about this market? It's tied to gravity, and I'm expecting what about these swings? Same size. So some bit of range contraction which forces them into consistent same size yeah if we're not in an, in a, in, not an eclipse an ellipse if we're not in an ellipse it becomes orderly Sharon yeah get it Al says holy cow this is brilliant okay do you see it well at least you follow the logic all right you didn't like this. I'm going to go with Aaron. You didn't like this. It's too aggressive. Why the hell is this different than this? Okay, with me? But when this bar prints, you go, oh, crap. Now I can see that this is a major low, except I got one problem. I'm not long. I didn't believe here. And now it's up here. I didn't believe. Jesus says, how do I get in? Right? This is when pattern recognition, I don't want to use pattern recognition the same way that most people in the markets do. This is when you need to think about repetitive patterns that you've seen. Okay, it either is going to take off and there's no chance of me getting in, in which case I expect it to take out the highs. It's, a, it's an ellipse. Or it's going to come back to this area or a sloped version of this area, in which case I expect same size swings. You with me all now? And I know it, it is things are moving fast. You got 10 minutes to figure that out. 
with a little practice, 10 minutes is a lot of time. That 80% statistic is new. It will help me not to think that I missed the train. Yeah, go ahead and file it away. Uichi, I hope to God that every few sessions, something, I mean, I think this, a lot of light bulbs came on just a minute ago when I did the ellipse and circle, but I hope every two or three sessions that something new pops out, right? Nicholas says, this is brilliant. Okay. So if this tests back, you anticipate a rolling chop. Yes, Gina, now you're getting it. So if it takes out without the pullback, it's an, it's a, not an eclipse, it's an ellipse, that's right. And I probably have missed it, right? But the other good news, Gina, is if it's an ellipse, the next swing is going to be even bigger. So I'll wait for the next swing, and then I'll get an even bigger ride, right? So it's a win-win situation. You just deal with what you get. Make sense? Interesting. Okay. All right, here we go. So it's easy to see now that this was a major low. You didn't want to you didn't want to buy it. 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 Holy cow, I think I get it. I think I get it. Right? Wrong way. Okay, I get it. I get it. it. It does look like it's not coming back. It looks like we're in ellipse world. Okay, so is gravity going to catch on or not? If this is a rolling chop, I expect a smaller swing. See it? <coughs> I, I'm just going to squeeze in for a second, which I don't really like to do because forces you. Here's the original inside swing. See it? It's that first impulse with no pullbacks. I know we went further, but this is the clean, beautiful piece of gravity right here. If we anchor ourselves right here and it doesn't become an ellipse, I expect we'll get something similar to this impulse right here and that will be the size of the chop something similar make sense any questions before I I'm gonna zoom out now okay all right so I see it now I see it now I see it now all I need is to find out whether or not it's an ellipse or whether or not it's going to turn into a rolling chop and if it does throw it into a rolling chop, then I'll get an entry somewhere over in here, whether it's a sloped variation or it's right on the congestion. You labeled that smaller swing. Yeah, similar swing is probably. It is a smaller swing. If you think about it. I'm copying that one thrust down swing but the whole swing down lower this is a smaller swing but I'm going to expect this clear clean thrust which was over there to be the size of the chop okay you need something logical that's the most logical thing I have on the board all right and you you'd be surprised how often remember anybody know Occam's razor It's, it's something we use in physics all the time. And basically, it says, very simple. Yep, Gina says, in all things being equal, the simple, simplest answer is the solution. All things being equal, simple is always better. Okay? That's Occam's razor. All things being equal, the one clear easy swing that I have on this whole board is that one uninterrupted thrust down. See it? Same thing as KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep, absolutely right. Okay, so when I go to measure here, where, where, where okay, when I go to measure here, get it? Now I get it. Alright, easy to see. It's either 
and ellipse and it's not going to pull back or it's going to pull back to this congestion line or a sloped variant of it and if it does I'm going to keep it simple I'm going to use the length of that that's the cleanest swing I have in this series and I'm going to use that as the likely length if this turns into a rolling chop. If I get an entry, I'll trade the rolling chop. Make sense? Everybody with me? Now all I need is a damn entry. <clears throat> I'm patient. See the order? The Greybeards know this stuff inside and out. They can do it without me. Well, I shouldn't say that. Several of them left and went to try their trade. And I don't mean this in a bad way. Went and tried to trade their own account. Or went to try and trade for other people. And they're back working for me. And they're allowed to trade along with me if they want. Um, yes, you measure the swing from the blue line and not the end of the lowest bar. Um, well, here's where I'm going to catch it, right? So I'm going to think about this as the if it comes back down here and then ignites, I'm going to think about this as the length of swing. This stuff is all noise. Amanda, it, the reason why I allow them to trade alongside... <laughs> can I be a gray beard? Not sure how I will go. I have... There, one of them is female. Amanda, it's okay. Um... It just means they've been with me at least 15 years. Um, they chose the name, not me. Um, it's human nature, if you're around the markets for a long time, that you want to participate, right? I put together the company. I gave them all five years worth of money in a trust that pays out every year. They also get they also get a participation in the fund. But if they want to trade along, as long as they execute my orders, I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to fight their hum, the human nature, okay? Instead, I, and, and by the way, when I work for institutions, they allowed me to trade along as well. So I just, I don't think about it. Might make them pay better attention. All right, so to trade ellipse... I need aggressive entry, but to try, oh, that's a great, op there's a great op opportunity for everybody, a great observation for everybody. But Gina says, so if I want to trade the ellipse, I need the aggressive entry, but if I think it's a rolling chop, I can enter on a less aggressive entry. Well, here's another way to think about it, Gina. If you get in on this aggressive entry and it takes off, at that point, you know it's not likely a same size swing or a smaller swing. It's an ellipse. So you should be trying to box in profit. If it comes back and fills you over here, even if you get in here, if it then comes back to the same area, then you know that you should be looking for a similar swing. So an entry here that doesn't come back tells you you're in ellipse. An entry here that does come back tells you that you're probably in a similar size swing. That's a great observation, Gina. This is the best session ever. Wow. I love that. Makes me glad I got up. All right, here we go. Wow. Got a lot of people liking this one. All right. Still, Gina, have you given up? Is it an ellipse? Gina says yes, it's an ellipse. Okay. Any Anybody else not agree? Does it look like an ellipse? Al says, no, I don't agree. Anybody else? It's gone uh, 45 pips. Okay. Oi! Is it an ellipse? Ouija says, looks like an ellipse. Robbie says, too early. Is it an ellipse?
Yes. Okay. B is probably in. We've got a lower high. See it? See the lower high? B is probably in. Can you guess where A is at? If that's B. A is the low low. Yeah. Gina, are we in an ellipse? Okay, everybody had given it up and said, okay, mm, I guess maybe it is an ellipse. Okay, the answer is probably at this point. We're swinging right back to this area. If we swing right back to here, we are probably not in an ellipse. Even if we get busted out to the downside, if we get an entry and get stopped out, the size of the swing has contracted, so we're not in an ellipse, are we? We may have the wrong entry area, but we're not in an ellipse. We didn't have expanding upside pivots. Yes? Okay, well, if we're in an ellipse, we would have taken out the high. We're leaving lower highs. I mean, unless we turn right now and take this high out. But at the moment, we're leaving low, lower highs. If we get back to this entry area, even if it, if it, well, if it turned now and took out the high, Amanda, yeah, we could be in an ellipse. We could be in expanding pivots. But if we come to, again, this area or a slope version of this area, even if we get stopped out, we're in rolling chop world, or at least same size pivots. Okay. So what it does right now is important. It's left a lower high. We need to see this area. It could have sold the high. Is there enough room? Let's test that hypothesis. You'd be leaning on this restructure. Okay, be risking 250 to make 390. You willing to do that? Okay, so I couldn't have sold the high, could I? It's not time yet. The market hasn't made a decision. The median line shows us typical range for chop. Um kind of, sort of, more of a coincidence. Because remember, we're down at the warning line and we're only getting up to the median line and its gravity, actually John, is degrading on these swings. These swings are going to be based over here, so to speak. Robbie says, if, so you're telling us now B and A, does that mean that your bias in this market now is to the upside as we still have the downsloping median line? I don't care about the downsloping median line, Robbie. That's, that's like trend. I would still have been labeling those C and B pivots. Well, you go ahead, but I'm focused on this low now. You need to pay attention. I'm focused on this low now and whether this becomes an ellipse or whether it pulls back to become a rolling chop. Okay? You're going to have to re-watch the tape and understand the focus here. Just because there's a downsloping median line doesn't mean this market is going down or up. 
because I can draw an upsloper and a downside. I can do all kinds of things in here. But that's not market structure. That's not understanding the next move, which is what I'm trying to get you to understand here, Robbie. Okay? Don't be a line baby. See, Johnny, you're not the only one that gets tough love. Robbie here gets lots of kicks, so to speak. Okay, don't be a line baby. Just because there's a down sloping line in front of you, do you want me to get rid of it? Here. Hell, I'll make it easy for you, Robbie. I don't need this freaking line. Well, I'll try and make it easy. There. No down sloping line. Happy? Remember we talked about on Monday? Johnny, make sure you go back and review Monday's tape. I'll have Ed give you um, access to the tapes. If you don't get access to the tapes, email me and support. Remember on Monday, we had a range. I drew an immediate line. It immediately changed your view of the current market. Remember that? Then I pulled the median line out, and then immediately your observation changed right back. Remember that? You cannot let these lines make your decision. You use the tool. You can't let the tool use you, okay? Use price, and only price. Well, you have to see through them, Robbie. And think about, I've just given you a tremendous tool to decide whether or not this is going to be, I don't think, I've never done this before, have I guys? This is brand new for you guys. I've never shown this before. I just, brand spanky, there you go, thank you David. I've just shown you a great tool to decide whether or not we're going to have similar size swings or range expansion. And it's easy peasy. And some light bulbs went on for a lot of people here. Okay, Robbie, watch this and watch this and watch this because this just showed you A, the downward was over, and B, when we don't take out the top, it says range expansion is not going to happen. Okay? With me? I don't care. You're getting wicked. Makes it clear, clear, clear. Good. I don't care if you catch this entry. That's not what I care about. What I care about is that you see this entry because eventually you will be able to get it and understand the implications of what's happening right here. All right, so let's catch up to where we are because we're not done yet. B is in. If B is in, Robbie... What's the median line going to look like? If this is B, what's this median line going to look like? Upsloping. Okay. Where do you think I expect C to form, Amanda? Not above the bottom. You can be better than that. Yeah, around the blue area, right? Right around the congestion. Hey, Shane, how you doing? Okay. And Shane is not Shane Blankenship. Shane's a professional trader. In Asia. All right. Yeah, you could take. You could think about taking this entry if you want, Al. But you'd immediately be waved off. Here's a great tool for everybody. You'd wave it off because you know. Um, I can't even get two to one out of this thing, okay? So when you do the calculation, if your risk reward is crap, don't step into it. Just take it off the board. Go, okay, maybe, oh, no, never mind. Because it looks like maybe I've got price swinging back into this area. Let me see, yeah, let me wait for C, see if it forms. Okay, that means you're trying to trade too early. All right, so we're watching. 
That helps to explain how uh, how to wave less bad trades. Yes. Look, if you can't afford some trade because the stop's too high, that'll wave you off a bad trade. If you if you measure the risk reward and it's crap, that'll wave you off a bad trade. All of those things will save you money. You said 80% of the time price will revisit, and it doesn't. Range expansion is, and if it doesn't, range expansion is likely. Does that mean you only get range expansion 20% of the time? Let me add a caveat into there, Aaron. You ready? We've already contracted. We've already made a major top and contracted. We had a three three hundred and fifty point run up that we showed on Monday, right? That was the last trade. We showed three trades on Monday. That was the last trade. Now we've left double tops and come down, and this one was uh hundred and off the top of my head, hundred and twenty. So we've already had range contraction, correct? Yes? Okay. So then when we get this type of congestion after range contraction, 80% of the time we're going to come back and fill this. Now, I am I will tell you this. If I could show you a decaying slope, the further, think about gravity again, the further out we get from this area, it it's no longer 80% up here. But price is, and I don't want to mark it all up, price is getting pulled back here until it breaks out above the swing. Actually, even though it doesn't look like it, it's being pulled back in by the gravity of this area, these high activity bars. Okay? You with me? So the 80%, if we were in the middle of expanding pivots, Aaron, I wouldn't pull that out of my toolbox. Follow me? But we went from wide range to horizontal to a smaller range. And now the question we got want to know is, are we going to get same size range? Are we going to get contraction? Or are we going to get expansion? Well, if we don't make a new high, we're going to get probably similar sized. In other words, finally gravity has asserted itself and brought everything back into and into normal. And by the way, about 70% of the time in a market, in any market, we're in that circular orbit that just you can draw a line through. Okay? We keep getting pulled back to center. That's why you know you know people say the market doesn't trend as much as it trades in a range. You see lot lots of horizontal in a normal market. It's a rolling. It's basically a rolling chop. Okay. Reversion to the mean. Uh, yeah, that's the fancy way of saying it. Yep. Okay. All right. So Gina, you ready? Sharon, you ready? Amanda. It's the girls trading. Oh, the women, sorry. Here we go. I'm bringing on, says Sharon. I'm still interested right here. Okay? I don't need no stinking meeting line, but if you want one, I'll give you one at the time. But first, it's got to make a C. I think that's C, don't you? I'll be filled here or I'll be filled here. But if you need hope I can find this. Bah humbug. One second. Uh oh, that got lucky. All right. There's a median line. It's going to give me two things. The probable path of price. 
right? And it might give me a secondary entry, right? Me, I'd either be in here or I'd have my hands out right here just waiting because I know 80% of the time it's coming back to this line of congestion and or a sloped variant. If I'm likely, if I'm lucky enough to get the line of congestion, I'm going to take it. B is in, C is likely in, A is a no-brainer. And when it turns, I now know Did I get range extension to the downside? No. Did I get range extension to the upside? So am I now circular or am I ellipse? If I'm circular, what am I looking for in terms of swing size? Similar, right? So I grab this as the cleanest swing in the series. Here's where price is lifting off. I could move it over here if you want. And I'm expecting regular, okay. Another, and if I can get that, can you define range extension a little better? I'm not sure I understand, sure. The range, no, okay, range extension would be this. You call it swing extension. Did we come up here and make a high and then take out this low and or, yeah, see, we, we're inside. Did we come out and take out this high? No, we're inside. So relative to prior swings, we're making inside swings. Okay? But remember, gravity is a two-edged sword. It also repels mass two two bodies they repel so it can't one second about ellipse it can't get too small it's going to push back that's why we can turn from contracting pivots to same size pivots is this ellipse decay it was ellipse decay and what i'm telling you is ellipse decay turns into a series of smaller swings that then turn into same size swings and then eventually those will break and turn into an ellipse again okay so that uh, that's the birth death birth cycle okay you guys have now gone through astrophysics PhD level in what we do it in two hours All right, C is in. No alternate entry for you. Or is there? All right, well, if you're not in, when we come down here, you can afford to be below the congestion, but you can't be below C. You can't afford C. Sharon says, this has certainly helped me managing expectations and targets. If you watch this tape, you should get you a lot of ideas about how to lay out expectations of the upcoming moves. Okay? So it really should help you with rolling chop, back and forth motion. Okay? All right. So this entry is eh. Uh, I'm not that wild about it, especially because you're only expecting a same size move, right? And you've given up the difference between this entry and up here, 74. You can 20. You've given one stop away right here to enter here. I do not expect double the range. I expect same similar size swings. Double the range is over. So this is going to be 
get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. I'm not going to stick around because when gravity reasserts itself, I don't want to be involved. Okay? Hobbs just sprinted through the door by himself. Hi, buddy. What are you doing here? Somebody let you out? Here, you just stay here until somebody comes to pick you up. Hang on, we've got a visitor for a minute. I'm sure somebody will be here in a minute to find out where he came, where he went. Okay, hi, Hobbs. No squeaker? Yeah, he'll find it in a minute. All right, so secondary entry, I'm not wild about it. And it's because I'm expecting similar size swings. All right, so let's watch what happens. We're long here or we're long here. With me? And by the way, if you've taken the earlier long, you may have gone to break even and just got taken out. Sometimes having the perfect eye and catching the perfect entry costs you the money. I got it. Thank you got it? Thanks. Hobbs has left the building. With the target, is it horizontal or downsloping? Well, if I'm looking for same size swings, what do you think it is, Aaron? Same size swings, it would be, I'm just going to, here. Same size swing. Right here. And we're not in a down sloping median line. We're in an up sloping median line right now. If you want to, if you want to use it, okay. Does that help, Aaron, or not? Okay, Aaron, think about it this way. Low potential entry air, high. We were able to come back here, but it's a higher low. See it? So it won't be a downsloping target. It would either be at the median line, the upper parallel, or the length of that clean swing. I don't care if the downs if the swing size was from a down run. I only care that in Watch. I grabbed it from this downsize. Can you see how clean this swing is? It's the least noisy swing of this run. And I expect now that we're in a rolling chop. Okay. But in even in the rolling chop. I can use a median line to show me the probable path of price. And in the, okay, in the big picture, I'll get there, Aaron. In the big picture, we're going to be making lower highs and lower lows. And yes, it's kind of in a downsloping channel. But the cleanest way to mark that channel, especially in the transition from bigger swings to same size swings is to throw that same size swing out there and say you know what get in get out nobody gets hurt because the top is somewhere here but I'm not sure where it is I just know it's lower than here it becomes clearer after that first same size swing but okay but I know it'll be lower than here And the easiest way to measure it is the cleanest swing on the way down. It's still going to be overall the downswing. But Aaron, I don't even want you to th 
you're thinking about something that I don't want you to think about, which is, Aaron, you're thinking about these highs over here, aren't you? You're thinking about prior highs. I don't want you to think about that. I want you to think about this low. I'm either comfortable with this entry or I'm not. If I'm not, then I'm looking to get in over here. That's all I want you to think about. And I want you to think about, in the back of your mind, we went from an ellipse to a contracting ellipse. Now we should be seeing same size swings so where's my profit target if I'm correct and this turns out to pull back and give me an entry the profit target is the same size swing because I want an easy way to get in and get out I don't care if it goes here or here or here what I want to do is get to this area and get out and by the way a secondary you're gonna see that this is concentric look where the profit stop was on the way down it's in the same area but I don't even want you squeezed in this much you don't need to be all I'm going to do is just take that swing and move it over or get your three to one and get out yeah I'm only so so with that Al because you're leaving you're always going you know what when I see students do that in mentoring I see so many people just put their target at three to one. They do get their three to one, and then it was a seven to one trade. And you need those seven to one trades to juice your, you know, to put. You've seen how many stops I've rolled in here in in three days. You know, three days we've gone through this market, so it's been uh, eight days of eight eight calendar days, about five days of trading. We put in 35, 36 stops. If I just took three to one out each time, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have half that. We wouldn't, we'd probably have a third of that. Okay, so yeah, you could just go three to one, but you're really you're really going to cut down because you're going to have some losses in there and some break evens for the most part. So, all right. So, Aaron, I want you right here. I don't want you thinking about over here. I don't want you to think about up here. I want you right here thinking about this. The only thing I want you to have work out in your head is this whole thought about circular versus ellipse. And when it doesn't make a new high here and pulls back, that tells you that you shouldn't be looking for... Okay, I'll take care. You shouldn't be looking for range extension. Okay, Are you with me, Aaron? Okay. A anybody else got questions before we go on? You'd be more happy if we identified the easy money so long as it was 3 to 1 plus. This shows us we are using logic to exit the market. Yes. That's why I said on the way down, if you want to take your money at that lower parallel, I'm all good with that. All right, here we go. But I wanted a logical target, right? All right, so here we go. Starts us. Well, here you go. If you're comfortable trading outside the lower parallel, you can put your stop underneath here by a good measure of noise, say about like that and stay with the program but that takes a, a leap of faith we can read the tape to get in it makes sense to read the tape on our exit yes I agree Amanda now this take if you wanted to take this entry yeah we, we sure we could shift it I can find it uh, But unfortunately, the shift is not going to give you the entry either. <coughs> this thing just manages to poke itself 
Which I'm never going to be able to grab this now. I. I, Captain. Hang on. He. That was lucky. All right. Yeah. Instead of using the bottom phrase, the bottom of previous looks pleasing. Well, you go ahead. I'm not going to redraw. I, I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay. So trading here, if you're just trading off of structure, I guess you could have been in here and still had noise underneath C or in this case, A. But I think most of you at this point would be a little nervous about entering here because you've got double tops and it's making what seems to be a march outside the median line and on its way lower, right? So I'm not sure how many people would step up to the plate on that entry. So even though that's a viable entry, I don't think anybody here would take it. So let's just leave it off the books. Okay, so can you put a stop underneath this once the market turns? The answer is no. Now, if you got in here, you're at two to one. You have a choice. You can, when it double tops up there, you just about a two to one. You can go to break even at that point and say, if it takes out the low, if it gets back to my entry, just give me my, you know, just take my the spread, whatever, or my brokerage. Or, as Amanda said, if it takes out this high, then she'll go to break even. Either one of those works for me. But you can't put a stop here. It's too close to the action. You can be at break even, or you can be at your original stop. Everybody follow me? If you're if you cheapen up these stops, even though this is quick interday trading, you will get chopped and chewed up. Okay. The ATR is ten. If you I had somebody mentoring uh, la last week that was using eleven tick stops, you you're not going to get this kind of return. Using the correct size stops, you will get good results even though it forces you you know it's in, in, you, you feel like yeah no need to get ugly okay David um, even though it forces you you might look at it and go well you know if I was using 11 tick stops I'd have a 7 to 1 risk reward but if the correct stop is 25 you still are in the trade it's just three and a half to one but it's the same amount of ground right you just won't get stopped out you're still gonna make the same amount of profit just just not in stop terms all right so Amanda says and look at the by the way look at the right Amanda says if it takes out the highs she's gonna take her money Okay, Amanda's a, oh, sorry, a break even. So Amanda's not at break even. You can choose your poison, but at this point, you must be. Must be, okay? And for me, 
because I'm looking for same size swings, I'm actually going to go underneath this low with a profit stop. If we leave a lower high here now, we are likely to come and take out this bottom. In other words, the spiral has turned quicker than we thought. Okay? So I don't, again, get in, get out. I don't want to be wondering how to deal with this exit if price is down here. I want to be long gone. Sprinting. Okay, there is the same size swing and the median line all together in one place. Time and price, take your money, walk away. Get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. Uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll use this as the entry. All right, so we risked 250 to make eight and a quarter. Easy peasy, done. Okay, get in, get out. Nobody gets hurt. Make sense? Uh, I think there's one more here. We'll see. <coughs> All right, and this is. Uh, you know, this is a good two, uh, two and a half hour. So we've got two trades in one day over about a four hour period. And I don't know, we're looking at about eight and a half stops. We've rolled up. All right, let's see. Let's see what we get out of this. Heads higher. High activity turns into, okay, pay attention right here. Close, open, close, open, all at the same level. And then breaks back below the median line. Put out the red advanced multi-pivot line, right? Can't remember who said this. Might have been might have been David, but this is exactly right. If you can't see this now, after seeing it over here, and seeing it on Ford, print it out and turn it upside down. Top. If this is a rolling chop lower, do you see where I'm going? Think about it. Ellipse or circle? What is this? Same size swing circle. Amanda says I caught this short. Okay, so if this is a rolling chop, it's near the end of the day, then we're up near the area where the top should form. And what should we be looking for to the downside? Just, yeah, I mean, the whole thing should be right there in front of you right now. Same size swing. Right? From the entry. Just, just right? We know it's going to be something that's going to give us a little over 3 to 1. And nothing more. It's not going to give us 5 to 1. It's not going to give us 10 to 1. This is going to be same size type of trade. So that's get in, get out, walk away. Now, because we're out, 
because we were ready to take our money at the same size swing, we can contemplate what's likely to happen right here and deal with it, including taking the trade, right? If you think about the beginning of the session, for a second, I was unable to grab what was a beautiful set of topping formations because I was dealing with a long. Yeah, I had 350 points in it, but you know, if you're dealing with an exit, you can't worry about an entry, right? So if you're out and your mind's clear and you're smooth and rounded, now you're ready to deal with the next trade. Okay? So in, out, nobody gets hurt. Now I'm ready to trade again. Everybody get it? If we're not trading for the long ball, then we get out, clean our heads, go get some tea or whatever. If you decide it's the end of the day, you don't want to trade till the next day, that's fine too. Whatever you want to do. So let's see what we get. So we get a pullback. Can you see Can anybody see or feel where the likely entries are going to be? All right, so we get some sell-off. How many people think it's over at this point? Yeah. John's got it. Petra says, I would. Okay, here we go. Ready? Ready for the logic? If we're in same size swing territory and we didn't just make an ellipse, we just made a same size swing, didn't we? We're unlikely to sprint away to the downside now. Just like the last trade made its excursion and then pulled back, we're unlikely, we're unlikely to just blast through to the downside in an ellipse, okay? Yeah, we've got an 80% probability of return because of the nature of what's going on in front of us. Aaron, are you with that? Petra, you good? By the way, guys, um, I'm having ma I'm gonna having thoughts of major withdrawal. I'm gonna have to give up gum. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I have a major fungal growth in my intestinal tract, and it's not the sugar; it's the fake sugars. It feeds that stuff like gasoline on a fire. Mannitol and sorbitol and xylitol, that stuff. It turns into incredible food for... I don't have not figured... We're trying to figure out how I'm going to moisten my mouth. I can, I can use real sugar. Yes, I am using colostrum. Thank you, Petra. Um, I can use pure natural gum. Yeah, I've got something called... Uh, uh, I think it's Glee or G... Yeah, something with real sugar I can use. But anyway, just a just a side note since you guys always hear me eat gum. No, I can't use xylitol. Xylitol actually honey's the worst of all. Think of honey, they make meat out of it, right? Yeah, I was pretty shocked about that too. Xylitol, no doesn't work. Honey doesn't work. Sugar works because it's half glucose. The glucose cancels out the dextrose. Go figure. So I had a major chemistry lesson yesterday at the doctor's. Okay, so, anyway. If you hear me go gumless, you'll know why. 
we're just we're trying to we're going through the we got to set out the entire program before I start it all because Stevie is a maybe um, because you know I can't teach if I can't talk right Amanda says I have given sugar given up sugar and eating paleo away and the difference to my energy levels is amazing I work crazy hours and taking out preservatives and sugar has increased my energy amazingly yeah the only, I mean at this point, Amanda, the only sugars I take in are the gum that I eat, believe it or not. And I do eat a paleo diet because I'm celiac. So I'm allergic to wheat. So basically, I'm about as paleo as you can get. I'm mostly proteins. But I'm going to have to, A, um, and by the way, don't for those of you that don't know this, this is more than you want to know and something I didn't mean to go into. Did you know that onions and garlic are sugars? Hey. They turn into sugars. Onions are just full of it. So, it's I'm going to be having a bland diet for about 6 to 8 weeks. No, no garlic, no none of that stuff. So I'll be uh, getting blasted with anti-fungals, and then also gonna have a hell of a weird diet. Back to the Dan Reeves diet. If it tastes good, spit it out. Thanks a lot. There we go. Anyway, so here we go. If we didn't make a new high, we're unlikely to take off here to the downside with a big crazy ellipse. 80% probability somewhere in here we're going to get a turning point. Make sense? You're going to get another shot at this. Now, really, really trained eyes, you might have gotten a short right here, kind of, sort of. But pretty hard to grab. So it's down here, and just like before, you felt like the ellipse was happening and it wasn't going to happen. Just remember gravity, okay? And that we're in a circular formation. So we make a low. Yes, that is true. If you enter here, the risk is that you might get stopped out of break even. That is absolutely true. So these entries are actually, in a weird way, safer. And as long as we're not in the ellipse world, we're likely to get a second stab at them. If we're in a ellipse world, we're probably not going to get a second chance. But in this case, that's right, Amos says don't try to trade the top, trade the shoulder. That's right. As long as we're in, not in a ellipse world, we're likely to get a shot over here. All right, so let's see what we get. Well, it looks to me like B is in when we get these multiple bottoms. With me? You feel the B forming? That tells me A is probably in. Everybody knows where it is? All right, and what size swing do we think we're likely to catch? Same size. Do you see how different your perspective is after today's session? You don't even see the, the entry, and yet you already know just about where you're going to get in, and you know just about where you're going to get out. You know how much you're going to get risked. And you know the probabilities of whether or not you're going to get filled. Pretty cool, huh? Is volatility the top, not a clue of an ellipse world, and no volatility an opposite clue? Uh, no, it's, it's purely that we failed to make a new high and failed to make a new low.
problem with the master teaching you is often you don't even know you know something new. Oh, well, yeah, Matt, you know what? It's cool because when I have days like this, it just makes me very happy because I've dragged something out of me. It makes me realize how I do this, which means it makes my trading better as well, right? Listen, my trading has improved since Breakfast of the Master. No doubt about it. Teaching helps. No doubt about it. All right. Now, here's the here's the swing back to the likely area that you want to sell. Don't get spooked just because it's pulling back. Hold your hands out. Right? Does that make sense? Don't go, oh my God, look at this wide range bar closing on its high. Maybe I don't want to sell. Oop, sounds like the carpenters are here. Look at the volatility increasing. Look at the volatility over here. Now look at this volatility. Now look at this volatility. If this is the volatility here and we haven't pulled back, what do you think the volatility is going to... Do you think it's going to be a nice, gentle top, or do you think it's going to be ugly? Ugly world, okay? So, we can deal with that, right? We're not afraid. First of all, it's only one stop, and we just made three and a half, right? Second of all, all of you just told me that you can picture the entry and you can picture where price is going to go and what the size of the swing is going to be, right? All you have to do is figure out the basic area and start putting your order in. That's the end of the equation. And stop worrying. Traders have losing trades. If you can see the trade in front of you, as long as you can execute, you'll be a winning trader. As long as you execute and use money manager, you'll be a winning trader. The majority of traders can't see the trades in front of them. Today should have been a breakthrough for a lot of you. All right. Ugly. Do you see it? It's this is ultra aggressive. I anticipate a force pivot right up at the prior high and the lower parallel on a switchback. Do you see it? I'm there. Come and fill me. I know these bars are big. I know these bars look like a train coming at me 100 miles an hour now. And that's okay with me. Because I don't think we're in an ellipse. I think we're in a rolling chop. So I don't think we're going to be making extensions to the upside. Everybody follow? Is the length of the green under the dotted line one? It's actually more than one ATR. This is 10 ticks is the ATR. This is 25 ticks. I've got about a third above and two thirds below. Okay. The key is that I'm selling up in that area. I'm willing to sell in that area. I want to leave some room for noise, right? So I want to leave at least a third up there for noise. Because I know I am selling an ugly bar, what's, or what's likely to be an ugly bar. Make sense to everybody? So this is the art part. You could, you could be here. You could be, you know, that's, that's your choice. I don't even know where I had it set, but you get the idea? All right. 
All, this is the ultra aggressive anticipated force pivot. All right, I mean it says sixty one forty five. I'm going there. And then look at look at what that gives us for noise. See it? I think I think I'm gonna go a third in and two thirds above. How about that? Okay. I know it looks ugly. I know it will be scary. Close your eyes. Put the order in. Remember it's only one stop. Close your eyes. Boom. Right to the back side of the upsloping outer parallel and the prior highs. We're right there. And I know it's a scary bar, right? I guarantee you People that see this say, it ain't stopping now. Look at this thing go. Well, I don't expect an ellipse. I expect a rolling chop, and I expect the same size swing. So I don't expect this thing has much more, if any, in it. Now, you can sell this bar right now. Or you can say, you know what, I don't have the nerve to do it. I didn't put my order in, so let me see the next bar. How many, would, to be honest, how many are you, of you likely to see that? I was thinking I expect to see no follow through or I am just damn wrong. So Amanda put it in and said, if, I'm, I get, don't get, if I get follow through, then I'm just wrong. So Gina says, I don't have the nerve to just put the order in. Fine. Anybody else? Be honest. Come on, guys. Been there, done that. We already learned that. Okay. How, before this class, I didn't have that logic there, but now maybe so. Okay. Maybe says that you're going to watch, Matt. If I see this bar, if I'm not in, I definitely will wait. No, I'm asking you, did you put your order in, or are you going to wait to see the bar? That's what I'm asking you. It wouldn't worry you, Thomas, if you had the order in. What I want to know is, are you going to put the order in, or are you going to wait to see the bar? Pat and David says, I'm just, I put my in. Nikolai says, you have to trust your own work. Okay, good. John says, I don't have this level of anticipation. I'd wait for the bar. Okay, fine. I just want to know. I, I'm not telling you, you have to put your order in. I want a simple answer from the heart. Because I got an answer for you, okay? It's not a bad answer. I just need to know which are you anybody else want to throw their two cents on because there's more people here than that I hate I, I trade to take this order in a 10 minute but wasn't aggressive enough so I didn't get filled okay um, if I had lots of stops rolled forward I would be more aggressive and happy to risk one stop on my current trading record no I wouldn't put my order in okay that's a valid answer I tend to be aggressive, so I would, okay? Lately, I've been putting the order in, okay? Did my first early order placement this week. Well, con congratulations for entering the group, Paul. All right, so some of you would, some of you wouldn't, okay? So some of you are now short. Some of you see this bar. If you saw this bar, are you willing to put an order in at the, at the market right now to sell at this level? If you didn't, if you if you already short, don't answer. But if you were if you were, eh, not so sure about getting short. What I want to know is, if you see this bar, are you willing to sell right now? Wouldn't not me. Just be honest. That's what I want to hear. In my heart, no. Okay, good. Just be honest. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's one or the other, not this one. All right. So, all right. So, if you can't stand watching, if you if you didn't put your order in and then you watched and now you can't sell because you saw this close, 
Paul's, Paul's got the right answer, I think, which is I wouldn't now. It would have been easier if I just placed it before Bryce got here. That's why I put my orders in. If I think I know that this is not going to make an elliptical high, I just put my orders in because it's not going to change what I'm going to do. Matt Cube says either my orders are in earlier. I need to see separation. Okay, so <clears throat> be paralyzed by this bar if I'm not already in. All right, so let's say you're paralyzed. Let's say that you see this bar. You couldn't put your order in. You see this bar and you go, oh, crap. I can't sell this. It looks like it's going to the moon, right? Is there life after this? Do you have a, Do you think you have a chance? I told you with 80% it would swing back. It swung back. All right, so look. We've got 25 ticks to work with. You hear me? We got 25 ticks to work with. If you're watching and you think it's going to just zoom higher from here and you don't have an order in, that's fine because if it goes higher from here, you are gonna you would have gotten stopped out anyway, so that's fine. Matt Cube says I would draw a median line and see if I can make something happen. Okay, well, okay. Why does... Why does this bar tell you that there, that a high's in? If you didn't have the balls to trade already, why would you think that the high's in? How is that a different decision than? Okay, I'd wait till I see separation. Okay, so, yeah, you wouldn't draw the median line if you wouldn't take the trade. You sure wouldn't draw a median line. All right, so there's still hope for you though. Wait, I want to convert everybody to this, but. I'm not foolish. I know that in most people's hearts, they're not going to do this, at least not in the beginning. And when they see this bar, they sure ain't going to trade. So let's see what happens. Okay, you ready? Are you ready to be converted? How about this bar? If it closes down here, can you see it now? Starting to maybe? You, that doesn't work for you, Mad Cubed? Because it's, it's no prettier than that. C is in. B is in. Where's A, right? I'm going to have to go over here to get to the median line, I think. Yep. Trying to clean this up. There we go. All right. B is in. C is in. You wanted the median line? That's fine. But most importantly, these are basically mirror bars closing on the low. Okay. Here's where you need to step out. If you waited for separation, In this intraday world, if you're going to trade this fast, these bars are seconds long, right? You had your chance to sell up here. You passed on it here, and you passed on it here, and now you're down here. You get it. You paid for that information, right? You with me? Expecting to get short here now is foolish. This area has 
Felt many times like stepping in front of a truck, but with the understanding from today's class with logic, I would be firm in my conviction. Okay, practice it. If you think it's coming back up here, you are foolish. Here's why. David says, I tried, I was foolish, did. Yeah, here's why. Ready? This trade, taking this trade right at the close, is the same as this trade. Because, look, where's the stop? It's above this high. So, put your go-no-go -no -go in from this close and take a look and see what it buys you. What's it buy you? It buys you a third of the go-no-go. -no -go. Get it? As Carlos says, use all your stop, right? So at this point, you've paid to see separation. Don't make the mistake of thinking that, okay, and now it's going to swing back up to these highs. It's not. Because we're not seeing expanding pivots. We're seeing contraction. We're lucky we got this run up from this run down. So put your order in at the close. See it? You still got a third of your go-no-go -no -go to protect you. Everybody see that? Don't be a line baby. Don't say, well, you know, i got to sell at the upper parallel. No, you don't. Let me make it even easier for you. See all the high activity right here? Opens, highs, close, lows. This is where you want to be trading, right there. All this stuff up here is junk. It's like it never happened. Unless you had an ordering to sell up here, and then you're just happy. You traded in Magic World. Now watch what happens if you try and force an entry up here because you're cheap. Ready? Remember, we were willing to sit through all this. Once we get back here, if we aren't willing to trust our trading here and take the entry here, and we pay for separation, if you pay for it, that means you have to pay the price. The price is the entries right there, not up here. Okay, here we go. We're in. See it? That's the good news. Some of you are going to be standing right here or right here looking for the pullback okay can you see what I did I anchored the same swing size right from the high activity area see it and just put it to the downside <coughs> what do you what kind of risk reward am I expecting out of this trade how many pips am I expecting out of this trade do you think It's about three and a quarter ones, yeah, eight hundred and twenty-five bucks or something like that. It's just, I'm just the same thing. Not a bad thing, but it is. It's going to be the same kind of thing. No love for the cheap. Okay, we've only got that same range to work with. So, if you didn't get in when you should get in, you're not going to get filled. Okay, we're down to prior lows. See it? Here's the key. What happens at prior lows in a rolling chop? It's where the chop comes in. What happens? But why? It doesn't pull back. Breakout sellers put in orders, right? Price pushes through to get the breakout sellers in. Right? We blew this below the stops. 
it's not range extension because it's going to be the same size swing, right? But to get to our profit target, the people, the Momo traders, the people that trade at new lows are going to have to jump in the water. With me? Embrace your enemies. For they will take you to your profit. You see what they're doing? All right, let's measure it. <clears throat> if you entered here, you'd now be at only two to one, okay? Yeah, they're selling with both hands. So we've only got two to one in this trade. But when we break through this low with distinction, go to break even, especially when we're at the lower parallel in case price stops and reverse. We've gone from 80 miles per hour to what? 43. So if you want to protect yourself and go to break even, I'm fine with that. See what I did? Sellers are still all over it. Lots of people are thinking this is going to new lows. Amanda said she did the same thing. Okay. Pull back and retest. F just flirting with the lower parallel. But that's fine because as time goes on, of course, it's a slope line. So it's driving us to our profit target. New lows, new lows, new lows. Here we are. I'm not a pig. Same size as that first clean swing and here's the warning line from that median line thank you I must be going so this one that's you almost 900 bucks So I don't know. The first one was I don't know about 850 bucks. Second one was about 850 bucks. This one was just over 850 bucks. Um, it is early morning the next day, so let's say it is um, something like five hours of trading. The first so the first part of the day, and then this trading. You'd have to be up early like I am, but it's only three hours. So in eight hours, we're talking about three times 850. Or three times three and a half stops. Pretty nice. At the moment, crude is offering this each and every day. Well, if you can, if you can master yourself and keep in the moment, Matt. It is Matt says it looks kind of fun, moving that fast. Yeah, if you can master yourself, keep in the moment. Remember, some of these bars are damn fast, so don't try this at home until you have simmed it a bunch of times. Okay, Carlos, you take care, huh? Have a good weekend, Th and thank you for all the work you do, Carlos. All right, so we learned something today. I didn't, I didn't even, I wasn't even going to actually do the ellipse thing and then I just decided time to do it. Um, and we'll see what happens. We'll leave it here. How about that? I don't know what would, oh, I forgot. Wait, before y'all go. Yes, this will be studying. You can study on Monday morning because I will be down in the valley at the doctor's, okay? There is no session on Monday. Johnny, I'll make sure you have access. 
check on the web and see if you have access to Breakfast of the Masters. If you don't, email support, okay? And then everybody else, including Johnny, you sh I'll, I'll get this up today. Yeah, I need to get the orthotics on and get working out. That's the other thing the doctor told me. Um, haven't gained any weight, but, you know, I need to be burning uh, these sugars out. Anyway, Johnny and everybody else, watch this. Draw it. Johnny, um, ask that question in support. I have to tell you, I've never watched a video from our webpage. It's the same as, you know, when you go to watch the replay from the market maps. Johnny? When you click on the same way you get into those, now under your, if it's turned on, if it's not, immediately go to support. Um, once it's turned on, when you go to the same place, you're going to see market maps, and then you'll also see breakfast with a master, okay, once, once you're turned on for that. Now, unlike market maps, we only leave two or three sessions up. That's all. Because originally, we didn't allow any recording. But days like today are a perfect example of why you guys need to be able to see this for a, a week or two. This is, there's a lot of practice and a lot of thought here. Okay? So, Monday, I won't be here, but go ahead and eat. You can take the morning off if you want, but if you need something to do, this is certainly there to study it. I'll get it up as fast as I can. Okay? All right. Hopefully this was a good session. Um, glad to be back, David. Thank you. Um, I will have a long weekend, because, and I will be down in I was in Phoenix yesterday. It was 121 degrees. Oh, my God. That was hot. Um, I will see you. Yeah, it was nasty. <laughs> uh, I will see you all uh, sometime next week. Everybody take care. Thanks for taking time. And uh, come to the coast. Actually, Johnny, uh, North Carolina was 119. So, well, where I live, Johnny, it only got to 95, so that's not so bad. Hey, Nicholas, you take care. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. I will see you all next week. Oh, California, can't do it, babe. See you later. <laughs>